Okay, what I want to cover here is a hard homework-like problem that involves Kirchhoff's loop rules. So what I have are two batteries, 12 and 18 volts, and four resistors set up. So we have a two-loop circuit, which is what we need for, or usually requires Kirchhoff's loop rules. So the very first step that you must make is you must come up with a direction for the current. And so it's always good to pick a junction, either this junction up here or this junction down here. So I'll just go ahead and pick this junction, call this I1, call this one I2, and then they will add up and result in this current down here called I3. So right away I can write down a fundamental equation for current and say that I can take I1 plus I2 equals I3. All right, and so the goal of most of these problems is always to discover how much current is running through each branch or each uh, wire. So in this case, we have to come up with two more equations. So we have to pick two different loops. So I'll just pick, um, I'll pick this loop right here, starting in this direction. Okay, and so I'll start from here. And the way I like to do it is to say I lose voltage when I go from 12 volts to zero volts. So 12 will be a minus 12 volts is what I have here. And then I follow the current and when I go with the current, I'm always losing voltage, so in this case I'll have minus 10 times I1, and then back down in this direction, and I'm still following the current now, this time I3, so that'll be minus 25 times I3, and then we're back to where we started down here, and as a result all of those voltages must add up to zero. And now I can pick a second loop, and we'll go ahead and do it in this direction for this loop. It does not matter which direction you pick. And then you start, and I always like to start with the battery itself. So here I'm starting at this corner. I am losing 18 volts, so I get minus 18 volts. And now I'm going down with the current again, so I'm going to lose current through I2 and the 15 ohm resistor, so minus 15 times I2. And then finally going down through this resistor again like we did earlier, so that's going to be my minus 25 I3. And now I've completed my loop. Oh wait, no, I got one more yet. I have this part. And so what is the current going through here? <clears throat> well, if you look at what I've defined earlier, I have I2 going in this direction, and since this is all one section, then it's always good to write down that I have I2 also going in this direction. And so as long as it's consistent with my I2 up here, then I can see that when I go in this direction, I'm going with the current. So as a result, I subtract that contribution as well, and so that's minus 20 times I2. And then I set that equal to zero. So now I have three equations and three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3. And so I try to eliminate one of these variables. So let's go with something, uh, well, we can actually simplify this equation. Because we have I2 in here twice, so we can say minus 18 volts, minus, minus 15 and a minus 20, so that's minus 35 I2. And then again, minus 25 I3. Set that equal to zero. All right, so that's what I did just to simplify that equation. And so now I have I1 and I3 here. I have I2 and I3 here. And up here I have I1, I2, and I3. <clears throat> all three of the unknowns. So I solve for one of these variables. And looking at this, it looks like I1 might be an easier one. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for I1 in this case. So I'm just going to move I1 to the other side of the equation. So I add plus 10 I1 here, and I get plus 10 on this side. So I end up with a minus 12 volts minus 25 I3, and that will be equal to positive 10 I1. All right, so to solve for I1, I now divide both sides by 10. 
So that cancels and I get 25 over 10 and I get 12 over 10. And so this, this uh, equation then simplifies to 1.2 volts minus 2.5 times I3 equal to I1. All right. And so now what can I do? I can try to plug it into this equation over here since, well, actually, no, I don't have an I1 in this equation. So I use this equation and I have this equation and this equation left. So I'm going to have to go ahead and use these two in combination. <clears throat> so I can go ahead and take this equation and throw it into my equation down here and see if I can simplify that to get this then into terms of I2 and I3 so I can then use it with this equation right here because right now I1 is not usable in this equation so I have to have something in terms of I2 and I3 so I can do that by using this equation right here and so I can rewrite this and say that I1 is going to be equal to I3 minus 